Well, the U.S. bishops closed out their meeting in Baltimore today after a whirlwind week. In the wake of four days of deliberations, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops now has a new president, Archbishop Timothy Brolio of the Military Services. Also of note, the calls for canonization for three American women will now proceed. Joining us tonight with a wrap-up of the bishops' busy week is Dr. Matthew Bunsen, executive editor of EWTN News. Dr. Bunsen, always good to be with you. A, a lot to unpack, but first, let's start off with the bishop's discussion on faithful citizenship. What can you tell us about this matter, and, and where do you see the bishops taking it in the future? Here we are, uh, just a, a few weeks uh, removed from the, the midterm elections of 2022, and the bishops are very focused on the next election in 2024 and what to do with their document called Faithful Citizenship, Forming Consciences for Faithful Citizenship. And what they decided to do with, with these guidelines for Catholic voters and how they should discern in voting uh, was to reissue, essentially, the document that's been present since 2007. It's been updated once or twice, including in 2019. But uh, to supplement it uh, with a variety of other multimedia guides and inserts, essentially to try to update it to where we are today as a country, which was one of the requests made by a number of bishops, uh, who also argue that uh, when this original document came out in 2007, it, it really no longer reflects or does not reflect much of the teachings of Pope Francis. Against that argument, however, a number of bishops, uh, including uh, several who really defended the document, uh, wanted to make the point that Catholic social teaching doesn't really change and that this document is still very, very reliable. Uh, and, and in that sense, then, I think that the bishops found a kind of compromise going forward where they're going to reissue this document for 24, but then look at a pretty significant uh, revision of it uh, over the coming years. Yeah, and as we mentioned earlier, uh, three American women are now on the path to sainthood. Among them, Cora Evans, who really truly lived a remarkable life. For those who are not familiar, uh, can you talk to us about her? Yes, uh, we have three saints uh, who've been sort of promoted by the, the Conference of Bishops. That's an important step uh, in these uh, the processes of canonization for beatification. Uh, in this case, uh, Cora Evans, uh, who died, I think, in 1957, was a housewife. She was a convert from the Mormon Church uh, who had this mystical encounter with our Lord as a young girl, and it brought her eventually into the church. As a, as a convert, uh, she was also a mystic uh, and somebody who seemed to live a very ordinary life, but who had a truly extraordinary spiritual life. She was somebody, who, I think, who stands as a kind of role model uh, for Catholics today, for all people today, in much the same way that Michelle Dupont, uh, one of the other uh, prospective saints uh, who was advanced and promoted by the U.S. bishops just this last week, a young woman who died uh, in 2015 at the age of 31 from cancer. Uh, she had been a campus ministry uh, with Focus, uh, the Fellowship of Catholic University students. Again, seemed to live a very ordinary life and yet lived an extraordinary spiritual life. Both Evans and Dupong, I think, are notable because they're contemporaries of ours. One died in 1957, the other in, in 2015. A recognition of the fact that the holiness, its sanctity, is timeless, but it is also very much modern. And that's a reminder, I think, that we all need, uh, that the saints are all around us, at, even exactly as we are all called to be saints ourselves. Indeed. And before I let you go, I'm curious, Matthew, what were your major takeaways uh, from this week's gathering, especially when it comes to the area of elections? Yeah, uh, the election of Archbishop Timothy Brolio represents, I think, uh, a statement from the USCCB, not uh, as some in the progressive Catholic media had argued, some sort of rejection of Pope Francis. Rather, uh, the conference itself is looking for somebody who spent many years as a trained diplomat, uh, somebody who can really build bridges uh, in what is a very divided and polarized time in the United States and even in the church. Archbishop Brolio, I think, speaks to being diplomatic, but uh, he also pledged to carry forward so much of the, the work done by the remarkable and outgoing President Archbishop Jose Gomez of Los Angeles, pledging himself as the new president uh, to really bring forward that unity among the bishops that we need to have, but also to build in culture a sense of unity built again on Catholic social principles, Catholic social teaching. Well, Dr. Bunsen, thank you again. Always, always a pleasure to have you and get your insights. We appreciate it. Good to be with you.